Welcome everyone. My name is Eva Holt Rushmore, and I am uh, joined here by Sarah Adler. We're with DataShare Santa Cruz. Um, we're also joined by Nicole Young and Nicole Lezen from Core Investments and Jason Borgen with the County Office of Education. We have support from our translation team with Oscar Rios and Tisela Carrasco, which we're very grateful for. Um, so the team that you see on the call today are all part of DataShare Santa Cruz as um, collaborative partners. If you're new to DataShare, thank you so much for joining. Um, DataShare is uh, an interactive platform with a central hub of information with the most up-to-date data and reports um, of community well-being indicators. Uh, these indicators tell the story of our community's strengths and gaps. We started in 2019 and have since grown into a collaborative with a steering committee, as well as collaborative partners. Our partners include United Way of Santa Cruz County, Pajaro Valley Health Trust, the Health Department, and the County Office of Education. DataShare Santa Cruz serves the needs of a variety of different stakeholders, um, from funders and grant writers to community advocates, researchers and academics, students and teachers, elected officials, public servants, and many community members. So the platform we're gonna run through it today and we're just gonna talk about a specific tool, but all the program or all the platform tools can be really helpful in a variety of ways from program planning, funding allocation, evidence-based decision-making, research, reporting, and advocacy. So all these tools can be leveraged for a variety of different um, impact. The main tools on the platform include uh, powerful reports, local progress pages, which show um, specific initiatives and the progress that they're making on well-being in the county, um, specific relevant data, and then uh, the creation of specific dashboards, which is the tool that we're gonna run through today. Um, and we're gonna walk through the platform before getting into best practices. Uh, so I will pass it along to Sarah. Great, thank you. So this is the data share platform and I put the link in the chat if you wanna follow along. So this is the homepage and if you wanna translate it to Spanish, you can click this button, but it'll only translate the homepage. So if you wanna be able to navigate the whole site in Spanish, you can click this translate to Spanish. You can also be in French or German if you prefer um, up in this upper right hand corner. So um, if you start on the homepage, we have this easy find data button or uh, search bar. So if you know what data you're interested in, you can click on the search bar and look for that data point. Up along the top here, we also have different ways to view data. So if you wanted to view all of the indicators on the site, you can click indicators by location level under view data. And this just gives an idea of all of the indicators on the site. So it starts um, with the health ones at the top and then it goes into the other topics. And we have, I think, 395 indicators from 51 sources on the site. And we're constantly updating um, and adding more data. Um, we also have tutorials here. So if you ever get lost or want a quick overview of the site, that is where the tutorials are. We also have current trends. So these are updated monthly and um, they're kind of spotlights on a specific topic and we'll pull data and um, give a little information on this topic. So for example, one of them was adolescent LGBTQ plus mental health this month. So you can see a data point and then some organizations that work on this. We also have local progress like Eva discussed. So this is a great way to see what different initiatives or collaboratives are working on. So for example, the Safety Net Clinic Coalition is a program out of the Health Improvement Partnership. And you can see data here that is not publicly available other places. Um, so it's, you can see total patient visits provided at each of the Safety Net Clinics, such as SALUD, um, Santa Cruz Community Health, 
you can see insurance coverage um, and other data <clears throat> related to this initiative. We also have resources here. So um, some local resources such as the community assessment project are posted here. And we also have other data sources um, to kind of point you in the direction of other data sets that you might be interested in. Going back to the homepage, um, if you scroll down, we have some focused dashboards that can kind of help you get started. And we'll go into this more today. But um, these are for each of the eight core conditions. And so, for example, if you know that you're interested in um, healthy environments, for example, you could look at areas related to this. Um, we also have demographic information that you can pull and um, some other resources here. So now we're going to start to jump in to the dashboards. Um, so a dashboard is, if you go, sorry, if you go to data, interact with data, and then build a dashboard, um, you can follow along if you're following along on your own computer. So dashboards are used to group indicators around a specific topic, and they can be saved and shared um, or posted on your own website and kind of give an idea so you can track indicators related to um, maybe a project that your group is working on or um, can be shared with community partners to kind of see data trends. Um, we also have the opportunity to display these on external websites. So on a use, if you're on and you wanna just kind of talk about the HIP dashboard, um, I can show that dashboard as well. Sure. So hi, I'm Anais and I'm um, Operations and Program Coordinator at HIP. We worked with DataShare to add a dashboard to our website because we wanted to highlight data that shows how HIP's work contributes to community health. We like how we can link our work and programs to data points to track improvement. So we've really, it was really easy to embed um, a mini dashboard into our website. Thank you, Anais. So this is an example of it here. It's just on the HIP homepage. And if your organization is interested in adding data, adding data points like this to your website, um, feel free to reach out to us. We'll also put something in the follow-up if you want to add this. But so these are each indicators from DataShare. And if you click on it, it links you back to the DataShare website so people can find more information. So you can pick any of the 375, 395 indicators that we have on the site right now to embed onto your website. So going back to building a dashboard, um, we are gonna start by just walking through a few examples. Um, I wanted to show one other example of a dashboard. So this is one on safe and just communities that someone created, that ever created. Um, and so she just sent me a link to this. So this is kind of an example of how you can send links to colleagues to show data that you're tracking. So she created this one on, as I said, safe and just communities. And you can kind of look at some of the different indicators that she picked here. So this is what y'all will end up creating. So going back to the dashboards, um, there's kind of a couple different ways to build them. And it depends on how familiar you are with the indicators that you want to select. Um, and if you know kind of specifically what you want, or if you're more interested in kind of checking it out, checking out which indicators are on the site first. So I'm just gonna, sorry, Sarah, I'm just gonna wait a minute here. Um, so Sarah's gonna walk us through a variety of ways to build a dashboard. Um, after she does that, we're going to go into breakout groups. And I just wanna let the group know that you don't have to, um, understand every single thing that Sarah is explaining because we're going to then pot up um, into learning groups um, and kind of walk each of you through creating your own dashboard, but she's providing an overview. Um, are there any questions as of now? Great. Okay. Uh, take it away, Sarah. Thank you. And feel free to interrupt me or jump in um, if something comes up while I'm going through this. So one way to kind of start just getting familiar with the indicators on the site is again, going to this indicators by location level. 
and just kind of scrolling through and seeing which indicators seem interesting to the work you're doing. Um, I'm going to scroll really fast. Sorry if this makes people desi. Um, but like if you are interested in tobacco use, you can kind of just start getting familiar with some of the indicators on the site this way. Um, also, if you want to kind of explore those core indicator or those core dashboards that I showed again on the home page, that's just on the home page and scroll down towards the bottom where you can explore some of these focus dashboards. Um, so back to building a dashboard, um, there's kind of two main ways to do it. So either you can do it by topic or you can handpick your indicators. So if you wanted to filter by topic, um, if you just click on it, it, dri it drops down with the topics that are available. And so maybe I'm interested in um, alcohol and drug use. So I want to do something on substance use. I wanna look at indicators on that. I could select that and then click search and it would pop up with a dashboard with all the indicators related to alcohol and substance use. Um, so I can see here, we have adults who binge drink. This is also disaggregated by census place um, and zip code. So we're gonna kind of go over setting filters to make the dashboard and the data a little bit more manageable and a little bit more focused on what you wanna look at. Um, but that's kind of one way to do it if you want, if you know you want a really broad topic um, and, are comfortable getting kind of a large quantity of data. To kind of make this more manageable, you could also filter by location. So maybe I just want to look at county level data or I want to look at um, a certain zip code or census place. So um, I'm going to select 95076 and search that. So this would just give me data on alcohol and drug use in this zip code. So this is showing me the zip code values. Um, and again, if you wanted more information on this indicator, you can click on it and it will take you to the indicator detail page where you can see a lot more information on it. And again, feel free to stop me and jump in if you have any questions. Okay, um, so if you want to save this dashboard, you can click to save it. You can also save a link to this search and um, send it to colleagues send it to community partner, partners. Um, if you wanted to kind of embed any of this into a PowerPoint presentation or put a screenshot of this in PowerPoint, this is also a really helpful way to kind of have a visually appealing graphic of your data. Um, so the other way to build a dashboard, so that's one way is to just do the topic dashboard. The other way would, do, would be to do hand-picked indicators. So again, if you're just at the data, interactive data, and click build a dashboard, there's this orange handpick indicator sign, and you can select that. Um, and then we can kind of start to walk through how to build this. So I would recommend taking this route if you're a little more familiar with the indicators on DataShare um, and are kind of comfortable like looking for specific indicators. So we're gonna, um, give a scenario for this one. So maybe you are, um, you have a grant that wants annual reporting on um, opioid use indicators. So you're doing something with opioid use and you have to regularly report on certain indicators. Um, so we're just going to go and search. So I'm gonna type in opioid. And these are the indicators that come up here. So I'm gonna select them, each of them to add them to my dashboard. And I'll add the death rate as well. If you wanted to take any of them off, you can just click the X. Um, so these are kind of other fields that you can fill in. I would suggest um, for comparisons and subgroups and sources, I don't think that you need to add a filter. Um, it, can kind of just limit them too much and it's kind of better to take a broader view. And then if you wanted to take an off, off an indicator or filter later, that's something you can do. Um, but I would suggest just leaving these three alone. If you want to look at a specific location, not all data points are available for all locations, but um, you can give it a shot and then just take off or add other indicators. 
but I'm just going to add the location for Santa Cruz County for now so that we're only seeing county level data instead of seeing um, the value for each indicator for all the codes in all census places because that just makes it a lot of data to look at. So I'm just putting in all my indicators. I've clicked that I want to look at Santa Cruz County and I'm going to click search. And then I have my dashboard here. So um, if I save a link to this search, these will update as new values are added. So um, every time, I think a lot of these are updated annually. So every year, so again, if I'm doing reporting annually, I can just click on that link to that search and put in all those numbers again annually, um, which can make reporting a lot easier. And Sarah, all can of you the me the, the compare to sections as well, making sure everyone understands the, the areas of the dashboard. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, down here, these ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, DataShare has these little graphics that show comparisons. So, this first one here shows the comparison to other California counties. So, is Santa Cruz County, um, if it's in the green, we're doing better than other counties, and yellow and red are worse than other counties. So this would mean um, we have a lower opioid prescription rate. And then the California value just means that we're higher, that um, the California value were lower than our prior value the previous year. And in general, the trend is going down. Also, if you were to click on these um, and go to the indicator detail page that also has these comparisons, you can hover over it and it'll tell you exactly what it is, which is really helpful. Um, each of these are hover overable. So going back to our dashboard, um, again, if you wanted to save a and link, you could save it and send it. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and um, if, if you forget what the meaning of one of those um, icons exactly is, there's actually a little legend pop out on the left-hand side of um, the indicator screen. Um, in dark blue, and then that legend, I don't know if you can pop it out, um, Sarah, where it says, see the legend, um, it explains each, um, each value on the, yeah, the tool tab. Mm -hmm. That's a good reference. Awesome, thank you. So, um, so here are all my indicators here. And then also if I wanted to export this data and do different analysis on it, or sometimes I'll export the data and put it into Tableau, which is data visualization software. Um, or if you work in Power BI and other data visualization software, you can do that with this export in CSV format. So this would be your dashboard. And again, you can save it and send it. Um, you can screenshot it and put it into a report. Um, and you can also save it so you can come back to it. Are there any questions? All right, awesome. Um, Eva, do you want to move into the next section? Sure. So we're going to um, have two breakout rooms. And um, we're just going to start in those rooms with um, what is your main interest for the dashboard, your main use of what you're planning on doing with it. And then the facilitators will um, walk you through building your own dashboard. Um, generally, the first time it feels a little um, cumbersome, but I think as, as you get used to it um, and uh, it, it gets much easier. So, um, so we're going to break out. Um, oh, and then we'll come back and you can share your dashboard with the group in a few minutes. And then just to let you know, I'll open the breakout rooms right now. Some of you will actually go to a breakout room and others of you are just going to stay in this main room with Nicole Lezen and me and we'll, and we'll have the same kind of discussion. Okay, and Eva, we're uh, 20 minutes, is that what we're doing for the Yeah, let's, um, let's do 20 minutes and I'll um, let you know if we uh, need to circle back earlier or if we need a little more time. Okay, here we go. I think everybody made it to the other breakout group. Um, and so Nicole, I don't know, do you, would you be willing to get us started with? Sure. Just kind of seeing what people are interested in. Yeah. Or maybe we could do a short round of introductions. That's a great idea. 
And thanks, Jesse, for turning on your camera. And Sarah, if you feel comfortable doing so, great. If not, no worries. Um, Gisela and Oscar are our interpretation team. Um, so it's really just Jesse and Sarah. Um, so we're, uh, as you've met the rest of us, I think, um, Nicole and I are the core investments consulting team. And the various aspects of core, as you may know, are on the data share results menu. So we use data share a lot, um, both connected to core and otherwise. And so we're eager to hear what you're interested in. What, what, what's your area of work? What questions do you have about if you were creating a dashboard? And just maybe tell us a, a, a little bit about yourself and, and what brought you here today. So Jesse, would you like to go first? Uh, sure, that's fine. Great. Uh, so, Jesse Figueroa, I'm a peer navigator uh, with Sobriety Works. Great. I work over at the uh, Probation Service Center in Santa Cruz. Um, and I would use the dashboard to, I mean, show our data. We we help uh, clients, like, uh, I guess, get their ID. We get we get a lot of uh, homeless clients, so they have no IDs, no social security cards, no info. So we help them get that. We help them find jobs, so we help them get SLEs. So I would just like use it to show all that data and be more uh -huh. accurate uh -huh. with that. Yeah. So, um, so you'd be interested maybe in some um, some general data about the the homeless population in our county, and then if it's possible to show some of their transitions through your program and others, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. What kinds of what kinds of what their needs are and what yeah to be able to be able to see what needs are being met and which ones aren't yeah and so we'll talk about that in in a minute um sometimes it's hard to get program level data specific to your program as opposed to information about a population or a, a part of a, a a demographic segment of the population but let's see how far we get we'll, we'll play with some of those data and see what we can do. Okay. Sarah, what about you? What what brings you here? Um, for me, most of it is just about looking at what other vendors, I, I am the senior analyst with probation who focuses on contracting. So my role would be looking at whether, whether or not programs are meeting outcomes in other areas, what types of services, what their data looks like. Is it something we might be able to expect would work for our population? Just some quality control, some quality assurance, some evidence-based um, and some data around decision-making about whether or not, you know, whether or not we expand programs, reduce programs, looking at what other services are being done within our community. Okay. Well, again, you know, I think um, the, the broader population data, the, the more satisfied you're going to be with what DataShare currently offers and the, the narrower, the more program specific stuff, just to have some expectations management here. Um, because these are from uh, pulled from data sets, sometimes we have local data, but it's not always tied to a specific program. But let's 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 dive in a little bit and see what we can find out. Nicole, do you want to share your screen or? Um, sure. So, um, Nicole, do you want to kind of talk through and I'll yeah. navigate through just to kind of yeah. highlight the difference between the kind of data you can find on data share and what might be? Mm -hmm. not available. Okay, so you just saw Nicole click on data and then view data to get to the, the um, list of possible indicators. So what we're gonna try first is just to see what kinds of indicators we can find for the topics that you're most interested in. So I'll start by suggesting for Jesse, let's just see what we've got about the homeless population to begin with. So to do that, you can search in that, um, if you wanna follow along on, on your um, device, that's fine, or we can just do this together. So Nicole's punched in homeless. So we have 
those three indicators, the total homeless population and then sheltered or unsheltered. And sometimes um, the data share in general really rewards a little bit of time and effort. So sometimes you have to play around to find the right search term and terminology. I think that there are also um, indicators by homelessness, but let's let's try that later. Let's let's go with this for now. So here you can see some trends like the change over time of the homeless population that's unsheltered. So it looks like at least the, the most recent data would be 2018. And this is um, a federal source. And the, one of the nice things about data share, if you didn't know, is that it, it for each data source, it has the most recent data available so that you don't have to go hunting for it individually for each data source. So although 2018 right now feels like a really long time ago, this is gonna be the most recent data that you could get even by going directly to that source. And this one shows, it, it has an explanation of the, um, the indicator, why it's important. Like if you wanted to put some of that information in a report or a, a grant application or something like that. And then you can see the comparisons there that it's an increasing trend, that little red arrow going up. And it's a comparison to a prior value to get that, that trend line. So it's not, according to this, not increasing significantly, but some of that depends on the scale of the, the graph that you have. So if we wanted to look at some more specific dimensions of this. So Jesse, for example, if you were to filter by location, what kinds of things would interest you? Do you wanna look at countywide data? Do you wanna see if there's something more geographically? Um, countywide. Okay, great. So there's that. And then, Let's see if we have any other options for filtering that topic. So as Nicole is scrolling through these, are there particular things that would interest you? So sometimes you just can scroll through and you can- um, Maybe in education. Okay. Something in education. Yeah. So let's see. Um, let's see if it has something general about educational attainment. And Nicole had um, the housing and homes from the economy category. So you can, you can either go by category or if you know a specific thing that you're interested in, you can search for that. And then are there any other filters that we think would be useful here? So it, it's, it's pulled up, you can see here, in addition to things that actually have homeless or shelter in the indicator title, we've got some other ones like the use of housing choice vouchers. And you can see the comparisons across California counties. So we're kind of right in the middle there compared to other counties on that particular indicator above the California overall value, consistent with a prior value and increasing as a trend. And then for education, these are general, these are not specific to the homeless population, but we're looking at some educational attainments in the same way. That HP 2020 and HP 2030 that you see with the red circles with the Xs, those are for healthy people, 2020 and healthy people, 2030. Those are federal targets for the nation that are supposed to be aspirational. And so if you wanted to include this. Um, so Nicole, I think that we have 
Jesse, you deal with an adult population, it sounds like, for the most part. Yeah, adults. Adults. So I think there are some um, filters for like the, the proportion, of the number of um, students in the school system who are homeless, experiencing homelessness. So there might be some other ways this is not necessarily for your program, Jesse, but there might be some other ways to use age groups and to find more specific data about the population. There might be ways to, um, to look at overall trends in some of the, um, the health issues that people are experiencing like addiction or uh, mental health issues. You've got some indicators that might show risk of homelessness, like people who are by, by age group, um, Nicole, if you can show that. Yeah, the, this shows, um, especially in our county and like many other California counties, the 85% um, of 15 to 24 year olds are spending 30% or more of their household income on rent. So that's a combination of, um, of the proportion of a lower income possibly, um, as well as just consuming um, so much of disposable income that people don't have any margin if things go wrong, if they miss a paycheck, or as you know, that this is the sort of the people who are not experiencing homelessness, but could be with a change in circumstance. So all of these things might be relevant to the population that you're working with. And then if there's a particular chart or data point that you think is gonna be really useful, you can download an image of it, um, or if you download the CSV, it's basically the, um, the data Excel. in a, in a, basically like an Excel sheet. So you can then create your own charts if you want it to look different or want to uh, use it a different way. Nicole, I'm wondering if um, maybe I should stop sharing at this point and we'll see if um, Jesse or Sarah want to give it a try themselves and kind of, and we can actually see sure. what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, and again, um, you know, this takes some, some playing and some practice. So don't feel like you have to come up with a complete dashboard on your first try, but we're just trying to show you some ways to, to navigate and play around. So do you wanna try it on your own and then share with us what you come up with? Question, where is this data that you just showed us coming from? Like I didn't see any source information for us to understand the data or cross it or figure out where this data is originating from. Yeah, so each indicator does have, um, as I mentioned that on the very first one, um, it shows the source of the data. If you click on the indicator itself. Okay. So we had a federal source for one of the things we were looking at. So they vary. Some of them are California data from the California Health Interview Survey that's done by UCLA. Some are U.S. Census data from the American Community Survey that are national samples. Some are local. Um, so there's a there's a um, a variety. You can also filter by data source, um, okay. which. I wouldn't recommend initially just because um, the more you filter, the more it's restricted. But there, Nicole's showing the different data sources that you can filter by. They're that bottom, uh, that bottom filter on this list. But Sarah, it, for each indicator, you can find out the, the source of the data, the intervals in which it's collected, how recent it really is, um, and um, lots more about it so for each one. And so if you're um, building a dashboard and you're looking at the indicators on the dashboard, you just have to actually click on the indicator to see all that detail that Nicole was mentioning. But these are kind of high level summaries and then each one, you can look at the details for it. And, and Sarah, that's to us, that's one of the huge advantages of data share is that it hunts down um, all of these different sources to get at these so that it, it really reduces the, the burden and workload of tracking them down individually. Um, so it may not have everything that you want or need, but what it does have is gonna be as current as possible. And as, as Sarah Adler mentioned, 
um, the, the universe of indicators on data share grows um, regularly. So if you don't see something that's useful to you, um, it's always worth checking back. And it's also worth um, letting us know if there's something that would be really useful to you that you don't see there. Because there's a, a data committee that is constantly reviewing different gaps and needs, and we want this to be as robust as possible. It's still relatively new. It was only launched in 2019. So it's grown a lot since then, and it will just continue to grow because a lot of the data will become more and more available um, as time marches on. So, so do um, you? We have about three, three to four minutes left. Yikes! Sorry. Are the like other groups going to join us again? Okay. So, um, Jesse or Sarah or, or or either of you, I don't know if you're lo looking at data share on your own devices, do either of you wanna try building a dashboard and then share your screen to show us what you what you found? Uh, I'm looking at it on a separate tab. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's kind of hard to search. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to get to navigate through it. I can share my screen though. I was gonna say, do you wanna try sharing your screen and we'll see if we can talk you through it or just see what you're seeing? Do you see this? Or no? I've never yes. shared the screen before. Nope. Yep, we can see it. That's good. Yeah, so I was looking at the um, alcohol and drug use, substance use, Santa Cruz County. Yeah, this is what came up. Yeah, so Sarah, you can see the source there. Yeah, right here. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really mess much with the search uh, tabs. I just put like the first one that popped up. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's a great way to start. And then as Nicole said, you can save it to either share with others or plunk into a report or a PowerPoint. And where, where was the option for it to save, to save it? In the upper left, see those three, the printer and then a little- Oh, up here, oh yeah. Future? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can print it. Okay. Yeah, interesting. And then if you if you want just a chart that shows up, then you can scroll down. Uh, scroll up a little bit so that you see Sorry. the charts up a little bit more. And then, um, okay, so where that bar graph is, if you hover your mouse over the right corner, you see those three bars? The right corner, maybe this one? Yeah, that, there you go. Click on that. And then it gives you options. So you can download that, like that specific chart mm -hmm. if you wanted to save, save it and use it. So a lot of times like in PowerPoint presentations, it's really handy to download just the JPEG, the, the photo image so that you mm -hmm. can then paste it in to a presentation or, or, or a Word document for a report. Yeah, the ones I showed earlier, Jesse, in the upper left of the whole page, that'll do the page, but this is the one oh, okay. if you just wanna do this one This is chart. just for the chart, yeah. or just for yeah. the graph? Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, I'm gonna um, give the other group their one minute warning and then they'll automatically start <laughs> appearing back in this group. Oh, that went fast. I, I hope I didn't take up all your practice time. Sarah did, you, Sarah, did you get a chance to play with it at all? Sorry, I've got five screens mutes and all this stuff. I, I did a little bit, that. but <laughs> it, it's interesting. I, I, I like some of these things, but it is frustrating sometimes with these drill downs and you've got to search and you've got to find the right word. And if you don't, it, it's sometimes someone, another analyst will search something, I'll search something. If we don't quite use some of the same keywords, sometimes we're getting different information back. So that's a, 
So sometimes that's why I was like, where's that source data? Because I'm always trying to figure out, okay, you've got information. Where did it come from? Because when your information varies from my information and we're doing the same search, why are we having different data sets? So yeah, I, I, I didn't see that you could drill down. I like that drill down further that gives us that so the original source. And, and we can talk about this more as people come together, but maybe if there are different interpretations and different data sources within an organization like probation, maybe it's worth getting an internal group together and say, what is our, what is our dashboard mm -hmm. that we're going to use for X, Y, and Z reporting? Yeah, that would be good. Just because some people will find different things they think that should be part of that collection that isn't that starts to skew the data. Right. And that way, what if you invest some time up front in doing that, then it's much easier to update later. Perfect. Welcome back, hey, everybody. other group. Thank you. <laughs> Hi there. Thanks. Um, so I know um, that uh, our initial instruction was that we would share a dashboard back to the main group. Um, but I really enjoyed our uh, conversation in the breakout group and learning more about why this is important. Um, so I'm just wondering if there was any themes in the group that we weren't in um, that uh, one of the participants would like to share or any, um, any insights that came up as you were kind of going through the, the tool. Or in our group as well. I don't know if Adriana or Ismael or, um, yeah, if you guys would want to share anything. I, I mean, I, I said it in, in our group that just this is uh, totally interesting and totally on point. Uh, you know, one of the things that was spoken of, about um, in the meeting, let's see, I think it was Jason, just talked about uh, data, um, being data literate you know, data literacy. And uh, that's a, a real big gap, I think. You know, we we all take, you know, some of us take statistics in college and all that, but what, what's that, what, why is that useful? What's it good for? This is the, the whole point of statistics is data. And so being able to use it, you know, be literate like that, uh, anyways, it's, it's just invaluable. Um, I, I can just share that I think this is a very valuable resource, and I feel that overall everybody that works with at some capacity with families, youth, and children should um, get some training and information on this. Um, not only are we, um, you know, maximizing the work that we're doing, but also um, providing more resources to the community that we're serving. And I kind of overheard a little bit about the conversation that Sarah was um, sharing with Nicole the Nicole's as we were logging back in. And um, I think that's also one of the concerns that I have, like, you know, how the data, how the data is collected and um, to ensure that it's actually put in the right uh, buckets or collected effectively because like one number can, you know, screw up everything else. So I think that was one of the things that um, we brought up in the conversation, like if, um, how we're using data share and how we are also presenting it to people that we, that we, work with. And I just put this in the chat, but if you're interested in having a presentation on data share for your organization, um, please let us know over email. I'll put my email down in the chat. Jesse or, or Sarah, do either of you want to share some of your insights or takeaways from the brief little discussion? I think it saves a lot of time. Um, it gives you data like pretty much right there. It's pretty straightforward. It's kind of hard to navigate at first, but um, when you kind of have an idea, it gets easier. Well, keep, keep practicing it. It really rewards some time spent with it. I had the same reaction at first, Jesse. Yeah, I'll keep, uh -huh. I'll keep using it. Did, um, do you, 
we we have a dashboard to share. Do you, Nicole, Nicole, in your group, did you guys get to a dashboard? Is there a dashboard you want to share with us? I'd love to see what you came up with. Jesse, would you be willing to share your your dashboard? Uh, sure. Okay, thanks. What I was looking at, um, the rate to substance use. Right here. So, yeah, I didn't mess too much with the search. I just went with the straightforward one. First one that appeared. And then we also talked through an example using um, some some interest areas that Jesse uh, said he was interested in. So I actually, uh, I can share my screen. Uh, that's where we then put it into the dashboard. So we tested out a couple of the, so uh, Jesse was interested in countywide data, um, looking at some indicators around housing. Um, Cause in his program, he works primarily with uh, people who are experiencing homelessness. And he was interested in some educational indicators and to see what came up. And then through the conversation, we were interested in saying, okay, is there anything specific to age that would be interesting? And so we were able to see that under economy, housing and homes, that there's data around um, kind of the housing burden for renters and educational attainment. And actually then if we, we actually started off without the age filter, and there were more indicators that showed up under housing. Uh, so including the indicators around homelessness, but also more. Great, thank you for sharing. I like seeing other people's dashboards and um, program interests and how they, how they relate, it's really cool. Um, Okay, well, we have we have a dashboard as well. I don't know um, if one of our group wants to share the the dashboard link that we put in the chat. I think it's still there. Let me see if I can share this. Oh wait, hold on. Okay. Can you guys can see, see it? it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. I'm really bad with technology, so I'm I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> so, uh, so um, in our in our group, we actually had a conversation regarding a lot of different um, things that we wanted to look up and and, and to, uh, include in this dashboard. But we actually just um, entered um, the mental health um, information, and uh, this is uh, kind of what we came up with depending on the conversation that we, based on the conversation that we were having. Um, and our focus was um, youth and mental health. Um, and uh, compared to Jesse's, I think one of the other things that we know that interlinks is substance abuse. Um, so basically this is what we came up with. And uh, we were also very interested in other topics such as um, youth development and also, uh, you know, positive um, alternatives um, for youth. And we're actually going to see how that looks, and we're going to be working on that to see if we can create a different one, so that we can see the comparison of those few that are linked to positive um, activities, and how that compares to their um, also mental health. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up a couple a couple of housekeeping items here. We're gonna, uh, Sarah's gonna launch a poll if you can just let us know um, the ways in which this uh, workshop uh, could be improved and what you liked. Go ahead and answer the poll questions. Um, while you're doing that, I'm gonna uh, share screen. Um, we have a number of 
further training coming right up. Can I ask a quick question? Oh, yes. I don't know if now's the right time. It was, it's kind of a off topic question. I just noticed during the dashboard sharing, it said colorblind mode. Did, you know what I mean? There's a colorblind yeah. mode? Yeah, so for users of the platform um, that are colorblind, if you press the colorblind button, it gives you an um, indicator list that isn't based on um, color comparison. So um, oh, it just sh it, it shows the, mm -hmm, for the graph, yeah. That's fine. I'm colorblind and never is in the world is that recognized. <laughs> so I was like, what? You know, that was cool. I'll have to yeah. check that out next time. Yeah, yeah, please do. That must be a tough way to go through a, a data visualization world, Ismail. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's a valid thing to put into the system for sure. Great. Yeah, to me, red and green look the same. Wow. Well, um, thank you everyone for participating in the training and um, we hope you got something out of it. We'll check your poll responses and um, adjust accordingly for the next training. So until September, we actually have um, a training every month and we started this series last month. Um, everything's recorded and on our website uh, as will this recording be um, as a resource for you to come back to. Um, the next training is a panel of best practices around local progress. So if you remember when we went briefly went through the platform, there's a whole section talking about local progress. So these are local initiatives that are tracking um, their impact and results and that the platform is uh, assisting in that measurement. Um, so we're with that panel of speakers has been working with us for a couple of years. Um, and they'll kind of talk about best practices for um, that process. Um, that is in July. And then in August, we have another Skillshare workshop, which um, will be similar to this one um, in terms of a final product that can be shared out by participants um, with a different tool. So the other main tool on the platform is creating visual reports. So that includes indicators and then some text um, for your topic. That'll be August 18th. And then in September, we have um, a local data collection panel, um, which will talk about filling some of those data gaps and building uh, local resilience. Um, so we are super excited um, to host these um, panels and these skill shares. If there's something um, missing that you would like to see, please let us know. And um, like we mentioned um, in our breakout, but I'd like to offer the, um, the invitation to the whole group is we're constantly working to um, fill the local data gap. So if there's data that you think would be useful um, on the platform, please um, reach out um, directly and we'll also have our contact information in our follow-up to this workshop. Um, so, um, if you have any burning questions, please email us. We're out of time and I wanna be respectful of everyone's busy schedules. Um, thank you so much to our uh, co-facilitators, the core team and to our translation and interpretation team uh, for joining us and making this available to a wider community and uh, to you as participants. Um, it was just a joy to hear a little bit more about the great work that you're doing and how data can, um, can inform that work. So thank you so much, and hopefully we'll see you at the next training or um, speaker series. Have a good day, everybody.